The first time I considered weight training was in middle school. I was around 13 or 14 years old. And I remember I was talking with another kid about it at the basketball court. And I don't remember too much of the details about the conversation, but we were talking about his arms for some reason. I don't know if I was complimenting him or if he was making fun of me, but I remember he told me, man, if you want to get big arms, you got to, you got to pump it, man. You got to work out. And, um, I remember being interested in it at that point. For some reason, I was thinking, man, you know, I was one of the smallest kids in school and I desperately wanted to get bigger. And I'm not sure how it came about, where we got it from, but we were living on our friend's farm, um, renting a little piece of land, and we had a workout bench at home. It was one of those, um, you've seen those cheap ones, the had the leg extension, the bench press, you know, it's one of those deals with the plastic weights that we filled with cement. Um, yeah, and I would also, I, I mounted, I remember, I mounted a pulley to a tree. I drilled in a, a little pulley and I made sort of a shabby lat pull down device. Um, but the cord I used was sort of stretchy, so it wasn't really all that stable. And I remember I didn't have any weight, so I, I tied it to a cement brick. And I was, you know, trying to do these lat pull downs with the stretch and the brick, you know, flipping around. Uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't much, but but um, I did enjoy it. It was pretty fun. I remember I, uh, the the guy who, the friend of ours, he was telling me I had to drink a big cup of water after every workout. It was real important. So I was drinking my water after the workout. Not before, not during, but for sure after the workout. In any case, when I started high school in ninth grade, they offered weight training as an elective. And I signed up right away. It was in the weight room of the football team. And the head coach, Coach Harper, was in charge of the class. And he would show us some basic moves. And um, he had it sort of in a training split with an A, B, upper body or lower body type deal. And he would write them up on the chalkboard, I remember. He would have his Monday, Wednesday plan and Tuesday, Thursday, something like that. Pretty sure we trained every day, though, so I, I don't remember the details of the workout plan, but uh, I do remember we did plenty of bench press, squats, lap pulls, calf raise machine, I remember distinctly, and we probably did some kind of rows or um, overhead presses. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, you know. Um, I remember all the other guys in the class with me were big on the bench press, and of course we were new, so we were adding weight every week, and it was it was great. Uh, but I noticed most people were skipping the hard stuff, especially the squats. But I tended to like the squats quite a bit, and that was something that I kind of stuck with while I was training there in the gym, and I remember. Some days I would, after my workout, I would, <laughs> I would eat a Snickers bar uh, from the vending machine. And I was, I, I remember some days I was so sore that I couldn't walk up the stairs. Um, we had a two story school and, you know, you would walk from the training room to the school and then you'd have to walk up the stairs to get to class. And uh, we had an elevator for disabled people. And I remember taking it sometimes. I could I could literally not walk the stairs. It was so brutal. I mean, we were just training all out every single time, you know. It's just insane. I remember how bad my biceps burned after the first workout. And uh, I was trying to cool them off. I was going to the sink and I was rinsing them off with cold water because they were just killing me. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, so, you know, I liked all of it, you know, all of the machines that we were doing. And um, I must have done that for the first two or three years of, of, of high school through 11th grade, I believe. And in the summer, I would work construction with, uh, with Sonny, a uh, friend of ours. And um, I was able to keep a little bit of my strength. And 
you know, I'd come back in the weight room the next year and get back at it. My senior year, I, I played soccer, so my weight training, I didn't work out in that gym anymore, but a friend of mine, Jody, his dad had a had a workout room uh, in the house, I remember. And I would go over there and we'd work out together and old Jody, <laughs> He liked to talk and pump his biceps. That was his. Uh, that was his workout. And I liked talking to him too. But I kept trying to get him to, you know, hit those weights. You know, <laughs> he would just sit around and chit chat and, and pump up his biceps. You know, um, and that's why, uh, you know, I was reading Flex and um, a bodybuilding magazine. I was probably one of the first people to take creatine when it was brand new. I remember they would take, they would have a loading phase, and you should drink it for some odd reason with with uh, with grape juice. And I was doing that, yeah. And uh, I was doing the German volume training, the ten by ten hundred rep uh, system. I liked that; it was fun. You know, it was just messing around with different programs. You know, from these um, these famous bodybuilders. You know. And after I graduated high school, I continued to work construction and I joined a Gold's Gym in town. I'm sure we had some gyms closer to my house, but I really wanted to be in a Gold's Gym for some reason. I felt like they were the standard and that's where I wanted to be. And I would drive, it, I, it must have been half an hour at least after work. Mind you, I would work construction and right after work, I would drive half an hour to the city, depending on where the job site was, it could be an hour. I'd do my workout, dip out, and I would be home somewhere around 5, 5.30. And my dad and I were living with each other as roommates at the time, because my brother had moved out after high school to, um, to live with my mom in Texas. So... It was me and my dad, and I would get home from the workout, and I remember every time it was the same routine. I'd get a big, you know, one liter cup of milk. I'd make myself one or two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I'd sit in the living room, and I would watch uh, reruns of The Simpsons. Uh, it, was a, it was fun. It was a really good time. Um, and I remember my dad, well, how are you going to go to the gym and go work construction? That's too much. Or... Uh, construction will get you strong too and he just didn't get it you know I was trying to get big and strong <laughs> I don't know how I did it either you know it's such hard work um yeah and you know then at some point um I I joined the army and throughout basic training it was more about cardio fitness you know high repetition push-ups sit-ups two-mile run and I built a real good cardio base in those eight weeks, you know, and then I went to my advanced individual training after basic training where I learned to specialize in my job. And that training time was about a year and we had more free time. We would go to night school and in the morning we would do some kind of sports. And in the afternoon we had pretty much off. And I can tell you, AIT was a dream come true for me. We had a workout room in the barracks where we slept. We had another nice gym across the way um, in this small facility. And as you went down further away towards the schooling area, there were, I mean, so many gyms to choose from. And, you know, I would, of course, work out in our little gym if it was more convenient for time and on the weekend, I would I would go ahead and go hit one of those nice um, permanent duty uh, gyms. They were amazing. They had everything in them. Big jack dudes in there. It was awesome. It was so much fun. I grabbed myself a training partner at the time. This guy, you know, he wanted to work out with me. And yeah, I'd lift weights. Um, I'd play soccer, play a little ping pong. Real active, real fun. Um just constantly getting after it, you know. Um, yeah, you know, and, and, and people, they were finally able to get out and, and go party on the weekends, you know, drink and have a good time. And I was in the gym working out. I was, uh, that's what I was doing on my free time, you know, hitting that gym. 
And that's a, the time I actually bought the Arnold Schwarzenegger's, um, or Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I bought his training Bible. And, you know, I was reading that in my free time, along with doing sports and weightlifting. And, you know, I'll admit um, there were some, in my opinion, and through, uh, you know, recent studies, uh, inadvisable training methods. Um, in that book, but uh, it was really inspirational for me. There were a lot of pictures of old school, you know, Bronze Age, Silver Age, Golden Age bodybuilders, pictures of them training, and it really kept me uh, motivated. Um, in particular, the smaller athletes were, of course, um, my heroes, Franco Colombo, which, of course, this painting is, is, is for or about. And uh, Lee Priest, you know, these guys were small guys like me, you know, and I was, I was uh, definitely inspired by them. And there was a picture in the, the training Bible of Franco deadlifting some ungodly amount of weight. And um, he's probably the reason why I started deadlifting in the first place. And I really wanted to be able to do stuff like that. And you know, this deadlift artwork was is, is perfect, you know, this is exactly, fits exactly what I was, what I was um, going for. Yeah, and um, then I got stationed in Germany, and um, I went off and on in the gym, you know, um, trying to keep it steady. The first couple years, I did fairly well. I was probably 19, 20, 21, and, you know, getting in relationships and going out partying you know you slack off a little but it was just a little back and forth and quite sporadically even after I left the military and and, and stayed in Germany I I continued to work out as much as I could until about 2018 it was two years after my first daughter was born I wanted to get serious about weight training again and I bought Mark Ripito's starting strength book and it was finally, for me at least, it was an introduction to somebody who was using a little more, at least at the time it seemed like, um, scientific methods for, for uh, strength training. And even though I don't like him particularly anymore or his philosophy, it was a, a beginning of smarter goal-oriented training for me. I'd start doing compound lifts and I would use RPE. I would keep a detailed log of my, my training in an app. I was listening to people from like Barbell Medicine, RP with Dr. Mike, Greg Knuckles, Stronger by Science, things like that. And, you know, nowadays I'm here in the basement. It's a shared space with my art corner and my uh, squat rack. And... Yeah, I'm down here just still grinding after it, doing the basic barbell lifts. And I wanted to put a nice painting on the wall, something a little inspirational. And so I couldn't think of anything better than Franco Colombo doing that deadlift uh, that I found in, in that, uh, an Arnold's training Bible. And yeah, that's um, that's basically what this piece is about. And where the inspiration came from. I've always been, well, I guess not always, but at least since I became a teenager, interested in weightlifting and and bodybuilding and powerlifting and Olympic lifting. I just, I like it. <laughs>